there goes nothing. <sighs> As you may remember, several weeks ago, I posted on my Instagram that um, I had been changing for a substantial amount of time. However, I believe over the past few months, I have gone through the most radical evolution of myself than I think I ever have collectively. One of them being, I am now an outspoken LGBTQ plus affirming Christian. I'd like to say that I've always had love. I've always had friends who I loved and supported and adored, but anytime anyone would ask me my thoughts, I just, I was always so unsure of what to say. I grew up in a conservative household, but on top of that, I have been associated with the brand now for several years that hadn't really affirmed the LGBTQ plus community. And to be honest, I've been scared of the backlash that I would receive from my conservative friends and family in real life and here on social media platforms. But please hear me when I say I am no hero for now being an affirming Christian. <sighs> I feel quite the opposite. I am sorrowful that it took me this long. I just hope my story and journey can maybe help others who may be struggling with this topic and others who may not be allowing themselves to fully love and embrace the LGBTQ plus community, our friends and our family. And I don't wanna call myself brave because here I am, a white passing, straight married woman. I don't get to be brave, but I am totally stepping out of the way I was raised. Knowing full well I will have plenty of backlash from friends and family and following who might assume that I've lost my faith when it's really quite the opposite. I've learned what it means to experience God for myself in my own way. And I've learned to read the Bible for what it is and navigate my own spiritual life. I am closer to God than I've ever been, but I knew if I was to accept and embrace the LGBTQ plus community that I would have to question the Bible. And if I was to question the Bible, I would question my entire life and the morales I've built my identity on, but it's so worth it. I would like to think that in the past, for the most part, my actions spoke louder than my words, but let's be real. How loud can my actions speak if my words don't match up? Regardless, I was often my friend's allies for coming out. I supported their relationships. I encouraged self-love. However, if anyone would ask questions, I was unsure of how to respond. I would say that the Bible says it's a sin, but the Bible also says not to judge. But somewhere deep inside, I knew that that wasn't enough. Somewhere inside, I knew that I couldn't be the ally to my LGBTQ plus friends and support the relationships and then turn around and say, I believe what they're doing is a sin. I was living like a hypocrite. And if I was lying to anyone, I was lying to the religious that I believed it was a sin. But who was I hurting in that? My LGBTQ plus friends and family and whose religious reputation was I saving? Saving? Mine. But my spirituality was dying, my faith in God was fading, my hope for the world was slipping away, and if you know me, that is the very last thing I wanna be, a hypocrite. My goal in life is to be real and authentic and honest, expanding my mind, spreading love and seeking truth. So, without further ado, I'd like to walk you through how I got here, what brought me to this place, and some of the cues that clued me in into being the affirming believer I am today. Of course, there were countless little things that brought me here, but to keep this succinct, I've chosen my top three. <sighs> when I was young, I wanted to invite my gay friends all my friends, but I wanted to invite my gay friends to church with me. Not so they could be reformed or straightened out, but so that they could experience God in the same loving way that I experienced God. But I knew that if they came to my church, they wouldn't really be accepted for who they were. So I never did, and I'm glad I didn't. I can't imagine the hurt that I could have potentially caused if I had. Not saying that there aren't affirming churches, I just didn't attend one. Probably much too many of my conservative friends and family's dismay, I actually had been a confidant for a few of my friends coming out. I didn't tell anybody this because at the time I felt shame for helping my friends live out their sinful lifestyles. And please hear me, I would never use that ignorant verbiage now, but I just wanted to give you like an idea of like where I was then. But something in me knew that it wasn't wrong. And I knew that love is love. But this was all the while I was told being gay is a sin. And if anyone asked me, I said, yeah, I believe it's a sin, but God loves everyone and I'm not here to judge. Sound familiar? Probably. Love the sinner, hate the sin. Ugh, what a cheap love. My other cue was when I fell in love, when I fell in love with my husband. I remember when we first started dating, we knew we were destined. We knew in our hearts and in our souls that we were meant to be, meant to be intertwined and felt as though we had been lovers through the ages and past lifetimes and will always continue forever and ever, amen. 
we still feel that way. But I remember when we first started dating, I told Adam that no matter what, nothing would stop me from being in love with his soul. That his body was just a shell of what I loved. Not to say that I don't find him incredibly sexy and attractive, but that's just the outside. There was no lifetime, no other reality, no bodily function that could keep myself from loving him. Like for the first time, I truly understood that when you fall in love with a soul, nothing matters, not gender or anything physical for a soul is bodiless. Another cue, I remember saying to my husband, Adam, and trigger warning, if you are LGBTQ plus and you were not affirmed by your parents, Trigger warning. But I remember saying to my husband that I hoped our kids would not be gay. And not because I was nervous about raising LGBTQ plus children, but because I knew deep within my soul that if my child told me that they were gay, that I would at once lock arms with them and raise that pride flag high. I was scared to know that I would finally give in to what I always believed in my heart of hearts, that I would be affirming and would in turn disrupt the core beliefs I built my life around and my identity on. I knew that there was nothing that I would do to stand in the way of my child's happiness and love for life. That recognition within myself awakened a curiosity in me that had been there my whole life. But up until that point, I had never allowed myself to fully open up and to consider taking another look, another look at my core beliefs taught by my religious upbringing, family, and essentially the culture I grew up in. And that's when I picked back up the conversation with God on this topic, where we left off over a decade earlier when a best friend of mine came out. I picked that conversation back up with God and it led me here. And maybe that story is for another day, another time. There's still much to say, including some of the reasons I believe I was stagnant in this conversation for as long as I was. But I think I'll leave it here for now. I don't know where you are on your journey of life, but know that you are loved where you are. You may be ready to hear this message or you may not. And that's okay. Bottom line, you are loved by God and me. Thank you for listening.